Thanks, Paul. Good morning, everybody. Are there any Buckeyes in the room? OH. Yes, there are. Thank you. Now I know where you are in the front row. Good job. Well, I really appreciate that introduction, Paul, and it's great to be with all of you. Um, you know, my relationship with Ohio Credit Unions goes back to my time in the Ohio Senate, and uh, ever since then, and even in the U.S. Congress, I've found that our credit unions do a great job of serving their members, growing our economy, and making sure people can live their own American dream. Uh, credit unions serve 127,000 of my constituents, and there's great credit unions headquartered in my district from Pathways in Grandview, the Ohio University Credit Union headquartered in Athens, Homeland in Chillicothe, uh, First Service Credit Union in Groveport, and Credit Union of Ohio. Um, all those credit unions uh, do a great job of serving their members and making things happen in our local communities. They're involved, whether it's the kids' baseball team, the Boy Scout troop, they're involved in our community because they're part of our community. So recently, uh, last October, I was appointed the ranking member on the Housing and Insurance Subcommittee. And as the ranking member on that subcommittee, uh, we were working on issues like housing finance reform, the flood insurance program, and cybersecurity. So I thought I'd give you some updates on what's going on with those things. You know, uh, trying to reform Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac has been a, uh, a big challenge for the last 12 years and not much has happened, mostly because there's no consensus of opinion between Republicans and Democrats, or even among Democrats, or among Republicans. And I'm trying to use my role as the ranking member on the Housing and Insurance Subcommittee to try to build some consensus, first within the Republicans on the committee, and then finding common ground with Republicans and Democrats so that we can do something to reform the system, but at the same time make sure that the system is there to help support home ownership. And, uh, you know, credit unions are such an important and trusted source of home loans for so many members across this country. I want to make sure that we're thoughtful uh, of the value that credit unions bring as we reform our housing finance system. And I don't want to scare anybody. Nothing's going to happen anytime soon. I don't think anything's going to happen this year. Just in case somebody has been living under a rock, this is a campaign year and not a lot of big things are gonna happen this year. But we can lay the groundwork and find common ground to start to make things happen uh, in early 2021. And I think that's really important and I'm working hard to do that. Cybersecurity is something that uh, all of our credit unions, big and small, have to deal with. And cyber theft is a piece of that. And other cyber attacks are important. All financial institutions understand and have to live inside some really tight requirements and already in cybersecurity, you know, you already are on the hook for anything over 50 bucks. So you know and care about cybersecurity, but we need to do some things to support you. And I think there've been turf wars based on congressional committees, whether it's the Financial Services Committee and the Energy and Commerce Committee that have prevented us from doing some really common sense things with regard to cybersecurity. And I want to work to try to make some of that happen. Um, you know, I actually believe that cyber insurance can play a key role in making that happen the same way that uh, workers' compensation insurance in the early 1900s helped us focus on industrial hygiene and safety. I believe cyber insurance, if we do it right, can help provide, um, you know, computer hygiene and some important cybersecurity um, support as we work to try to give some safe harbors from a patchwork of local and state laws that many of your, your bigger credit unions have to deal with. Uh, so I, I'm hopeful we can actually start to move the ball forward on that. The one thing that we can get done this year is the flood insurance program. So today it is extended through September 30th of this year. And anybody that's buying inside a floodplain that wants to get a loan from one of your credit unions uh, depends on the National Flood Insurance Program, and we need to make sure we extend it. It needs to be a long-term extension. I expect that will happen through the appropriations process ultimately, so I look forward to working with uh, Republicans and Democrats. That bill passed the House Committee 55 to 0. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez voted for it, and I'm not sure who the most conservative member of our committee is, maybe Roger Williams. Like, everybody 
from left to right voted for extension of the National Flood Insurance Program. We need to get it past the House, past the Senate, signed by the President, a long-term extension so that your credit unions and your members can count on the Flood Insurance Program being there and they can get their homes that might happen to be in a flood zone. So I think that's really important. As we sit here, we have a 50-year low in unemployment. The economy is doing okay. But there's more we can do. And one of the things we can do is provide more resources for economic growth. We need to continue to look out and grow the member business lending program of credit unions that allows you to serve your members and grow our economy. I've always been a co-sponsor of that bill. It hasn't been reintroduced yet this uh, term, but it's really important and I continue to support it and I want you to know that. The last thing I want to give you an update on is the Safe Banking Act. So um, the Safe Banking Act uh, is a uh, bill that allows marijuana-based businesses to get access to the banking system. And I will tell you, I'm not a smoke em if you got them kind of guy. I am not for recreational marijuana, but in 47 states, there is some type of legal marijuana business, CBD or legal marijuana business. And uh, I had a, a company in my district that doesn't sell marijuana, they're a fertilizer company. Their, their uh, folks were telling them they might lose access to their bank accounts because 20% of their profits were coming from marijuana-related businesses. Uh, that's a problem, and we can't have people dealing in that much cash. The dispensaries that operate are all cash businesses. Their employees can't get mortgages, can't get car loans, can't even get bank accounts in some cases. The businesses themselves can't get bank accounts. Uh, it is unsafe to have businesses operate in an all-cash environment. So while there's some more work to do, I'm proud to have been the lead Republican sponsor of the Safe Banking Act that will make sure that those businesses can get access to the banking system while preserving, making sure that illicit money stays out. We have suspicious activity reports and other things. I met with Senator Crapo, the Senate Banking Chairman, about this bill last uh, month. and. Uh, he has some principles that he's laid forward. Most of what he wants, I, I know a lot of the industry and a lot of people who are for the bill are very worried that he's going to kill the bill. Most of what he wants is reasonable. The one thing that I talked to him about and said, we can't have this, is we can't make the banks and credit unions into the THC police. One of the things he wants to do is create a THC limit. That doesn't belong in a banking bill. Like, if he wants to do that, we can do that somewhere else but it shouldn't be the banks and credit unions that are left deciding how much THC is in a specific product. That does not work. Do any of you want to be the, the THC police? No, I didn't think so. I just was checking because um, th that one, as long as we can make that happen, I feel like we can get this bill done. And it's really important. And a lot of credit unions have been leaders on trying to get access to the banking system uh, for those type of businesses and taking cash uh, you know, out of those businesses because uh, cash makes it unsafe and, and, you know, makes it a very attractive robbery target. And so it is important that we get that bill done. Uh, I know not everybody wants to bank marijuana-based businesses or, or provide service to them, but they need that service just like anybody else does. And in 47 states, the cow is already out of the barn, and we need to make sure that we live in the world of reality and make that reality safe for customers and employees alike. So, and, and businesses that might be the landlord or the hardware down the street or the fertilizer company that sells to those businesses, they shouldn't lose access to their bank accounts either. I think those are important things. So we'll continue to fight uh, the Safe Banking Act, just so you know, pass the House. We got 91 Republicans to vote for it. Every Democrat but one voted for it. So it passed with like 350 votes, a giant vote that gave it momentum as we move toward the Senate. Uh, and I will work to try to get that done because it's really important, not just for credit unions, but your members and the public at large. So those are the things I wanted to give you updates on. Thanks for what you do to serve your members. Uh, I really appreciate the Buckeyes that are here and all of you from all around this, the country for serving your members. God bless you keep doing it, keep growing our economy, and helping people live the American dream. 
Thank you, credit unions. Have a great day.